In part one of the series, we learned about how the city of Chicago got to be so segregated. In part two, we'll look at what segregation does to a city, and in particular to one of its most vulnerable populations, its students. The Chicago public school system is horrible, to say the least. I had gone through 13 years of schooling, and I had never read a book. When I went off to college, I wasn't prepared at all. Our communities that need the resources the most to get students to college are the ones that lack it. Driving through the streets of Chicago, my hometown, it's not hard to see the difference from one neighborhood to the next. Take Halstead Street, the backbone of Chicago. You can start on Halstead in Lincoln Park on the north side, where rows of beautiful townhouses line the street. But travel south 10 miles until you reach 63rd Street, just around the corner from Harold's Chicken, and suddenly you're in a very different part of town. Nor is the difference more startling than in Chicago's public schools. So this right here used to be an elementary school. Um, this is one of the 50 schools that Rom shut down. The community suffers. When you have the, the property value suffers, you got boarded up houses, vacant lots. I mean, this community is filled with no hope. There's something about life in a segregated city that produces generations of children who don't get anywhere near the potential to realize the potential they had when they were born. Troy was removed from his position as a school principal last year after criticizing Mayor Rahm Emanuel's mismanagement of the school system. In Chicago, most students are black and Latino, and only 9% are white. About 86% of all of its students are low income. They came to us from unstable housing conditions. They came to us homeless. They came to us hungry. They came to us with the trauma that comes from being in a neighborhood where violence is sometimes a regular occurrence. This trauma that so many of the students have didn't appear out of nowhere. It came from decades of segregation policies that have kept people of color separate in low-income neighborhoods without access to basic resources like quality health care and economic opportunity. What was it about my life in Bronzeville? What was it about my life in back of the yards? What was it about my life in all black Inglewood that led me to have such a low assessment of myself? Chicago Public Schools, or CPS, has been strapped for cash for years, and long argued that despite having 20% of the students in the state of Illinois, it only receives 15% of the state's education funding. At my elementary school, the walls were definitely peeling. <laughs> the books were breaking apart. Uh, we rarely got new books, like new reading books for the students, unless someone donated them. When I moved here, I thought, what in the hell is this? Why don't we have this? Why don't we have that? And I would get stuff like, we used to have that. We used to have this. And I think there was just no real broad plan around like, how do you support small, high needs high schools? Tilden lost nearly $200,000 last year because of enrollment declines and budget cuts. And after a school improvement grants expired, Swinney had to lay off his clinical staff who were helping his most troubled students. Once we lost those people, uh, we felt it. You feel it when I can't say, so what's going on? Okay, let me go and connect you with Miss so-and-so. It's like, no, Maurice, you're the clinician right now. Uh, let's have a seat and sit down. Let's figure this out. In 2015, Mayor Rahm Emanuel announced $200 million in school budget cuts and 1,300 staff layoffs across the district. I was impressed by Principal Swinney's ability to persevere in spite of all of these odds. When you look at that, the majority of the kids in the Chicago public school system is black. It's the urban communities, are minorities. And then you say, hmm, how come all the politicians and everybody with money send their kids to private schools? Because they know that the public school system is horrible. For parents, knowing how to choose a school is really complicated. There are charter schools, selective enrollment schools, magnet schools, and then your regular neighborhood schools. I think parents make the best choice that they can. I think parents want their students to be successful. Parents are trying to give their, their children the best opportunity. 
But this concept of school choice is criticized as detrimental to communities. As parents choose to send their kids sometimes hours away to charter or selective enrollment schools, for example, there is little confidence left in the local neighborhood schools. And because funding is directly tied to enrollment, fewer students means less funding. I'm worried because I know for myself as a first-generation college student, I know the difference that a quality education has on kids. I just need for her to be at a place that is going to equip her with the academic and social-emotional skills that she needs to be able to be successful. Despite the budget cuts, since 2010, CPS has spent hundreds of millions on the construction of new schools and expensive additions, but mostly to schools that serve white middle-class students. And many have blamed those in power for making decisions not in the interests of local students, but in order to profit off the school system. In April, the former head of CPS was sentenced to four and a half years in prison for corruption. We live in a system that will look at the education of that child and sabotage it on purpose, will intentionally not give that child what you'll give another child who happens to be white, right? Both babies beautiful, both babies deserve it. When it was time for G2 to choose a school for his own son, he struggled with the choice of sending him to a lower resource neighborhood school. My son is not as beautiful as any other child. He's not as intelligent, as brilliant. When I look at him, stars go off in my head. In 1971, the Supreme Court did attempt to desegregate U.S. public schools with busing. And for the most part, it worked. Minority students fared better at integrated schools. And by 1988, integration had reached its peak. But for many reasons, the busing efforts stopped. And today, public schools across the nation, including in Chicago, are almost as segregated as they were in the 1960s. When you don't invest in young people, you get unemployment, you get crime, you get violence. And so you get blighted communities when you don't invest in the people from those communities. A good education is supposed to be a chance at upward mobility, some hope for the future. But in Chicago's public schools, that's just not happening. People have to look at the inequity in Chicago, the segregation in Chicago. That, that doesn't mean who gets to sit next to who. It means access to resources and opportunity. The segregation in Chicago is the evil. The intentional sabotage of a baby's education is the evil. And I, and I ask people to think, what could be more evil than that? With more than 600 schools, the Chicago public school system is the fourth largest in the nation. So that's affecting a lot of kids, 400,000 actually. In the next video, I'll spend a day on the city's south side speaking to a guy who has a different vision for solving the city's crime problems.